All right, so today I'm going to be giving you a more in-depth look at the drones, how they work, and how to set them up in your scene. First, I'm going to be setting up the drone's different input types. The drone comes with three different presets for desktop, gamepad, and OpenVR controllers. In order for these to work, you need to overwrite the input manager file with the file provided in the package. Details on how to do this can be found in the quick setup tutorial. However, if you do not want to overwrite any files, you can use the fourth preset, Custom, in order to use your own custom input accesses to pilot the drone. The desktop preset uses vertical, horizontal, a custom lift, and the mouse X axis inputs. It also uses the key codes Z, C, G, and F. So as I'm demonstrating now, I'm flying the drone with the desktop controls. The gamepad preset uses all custom input accesses that are automatically created when you overwrite your input manager file. Right now I've connected an Xbox 360 controller so I should be able to fly the drone with it. The OpenVR preset uses custom input accesses that can be shared between both the Vive and the Oculus controllers. So now I'm here in VR in this world, the physics playground with the drone toad. And using the Vive controllers, I can move them around. Get a better look at them. So all the controls work the same, and using a render texture, I can render the camera that's normally behind the drone onto this pad that I have here. So now I can fly the drone from his perspective. So lastly, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the drone's mobile controls. The drone's joysticks can be found in Professional Assets, UI Pack, Prefabs, and Joystick UI. You can drag this into your canvas and position and scale it wherever you like. The joysticks work similar to Unity Standard UI. They have two event systems, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis of the joystick. In order to affect the drone with it, you simply drag it into the empty slot, and then choose what function you'd like to modify. So after you've set those up, you should be able to fly the drone. On the PA Drone Controller script, under Movement Values, you can set the drone's max forward, backwards, right, left, rise, and lower speeds. The acceleration slider controls how fast the drone reaches its max speed. Setting this to a low number will cause the drone to take longer to reach its full momentum. While setting this to a high number, will cause the drone to move almost instantaneous. The same rule applies with the deacceleration slider. Having a low number will cause the drone to appear as though he's drifting. While having a high number will make the drone stop on a dime.
The stability slider controls how hard the drone will try to maintain an upright position. Setting this to a low number, will cause the drone to behave a lot more loosely on collisions. While setting it to a high number, will cause the drone to recover quicker. The turn sensitivity slider controls how fast the drone turns relative to the mouse. Again, setting this to a low number will cause the drone to turn at a much slower rate. And setting it to a high number will cause the drone to turn at a much faster rate. Under all these values, you'll find the is motor on bool. This simply states whether or not the drone is active on start. Further below, you can find the propellers array. If your model uses any propellers, you can assign them here and it will cause them to spin around their z-axis. The rate in which they spin can be modified here, as well as how fast they slow down. Also below, you'll find the front, back, right, and left tilt transforms. These control how far the drone tilts during flight. Setting these farther away from the drone will cause the drone to tilt at a much more aggressive rate. While setting them closer to the drone, will cause it to tilt at a much lower rate. You can also use these to achieve a center of mass effect. For example, if I offset the front transform forward, the drone will tilt a lot stronger forward than it will left or right. Under collision settings, you'll follow the fall after collision bool. This will enable whether or not the drone will fall after a hard collision. The minimum force required to drop the drone can be set here, under fall minimum force. Setting this to a low number will cause the drone to fall after light collisions. However, setting this to a high number more force will be required to make the drone fall. The same rule applies to the spark minimum force. How much force is required to cause a spark? Below that, you'll find the spark prefab. This can be swapped out for any particle system prefab that you like. Under sound effects, you'll find two audio source slots. One is used for flying and the other for the spark or collision sound. These audio sources can be assigned to your drone, adjusted to how you like, and then assigned to their corresponding slot. The script will handle the rest. You'll also find an assortment of read-only variables, including collision magnitude, which shows how hard you hit something, and is useful for setting up the fall minimum force, the forces being applied to lift, drive, strafe, and turn the drone, the ground distance, how far your drone is from a solid object, upright angle distance, how far your drone is from being upright, your current propeller speed, as well as your start position and start rotation.